Thanks very much, Ian, and uh, welcome everybody. I've just done the uh, the walk to the G. I don't know how many of you are, were over there, but uh, I reckon two and a half, three thousand demons over there, and what a fantastic sight that was. And um, you know, that's really the core of our footy club uh, that we've just walked a K with, and uh, a very enjoyable time. And if you haven't done it before, make sure you're penciled in for next year. Great thing to do. And uh, just before I start, I, I actually invited Hasserman today and he couldn't, uh, he couldn't be here. Hasser, as you all know, a great demon, fantastic. I was at the Hall of Fame this, uh, this week, fantastic to see him inducted, but he's at the 1970, I think it was, South Fremantle uh, reunion, so a premiership reunion, so he can't be here, but we'll have him here as our guest over the next few weeks and uh, a great honour and a great contributor to our footy club on lots of different levels. So well done, Hasser. So welcome everybody, you're all aware. Um, this is our most important game financially for the year. So first of all, thank to all of, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, there's over 400 people here today, so despite everything going on, it's a great turnout. So thank you for all your support. Uh, I want to start by welcoming a few of the guests on the head table here. Firstly, from the Collingwood Footy Club, the CEO's here, Gary Pert, and his wife, Andy. Always fun to see you. Well, Andy is, anyway. I don't know about you, Gary. <laughs> And uh, the Director of Commercial Operations for Collingwood, Justin Reeves, is here and his wife, Susie. Um, no Eddie today, uh, which is, it is disappointing. We love having Eddie here. He's been a great contributor to these lunches for us, but he's overseas. But as always, he passed on to me his, uh, his personal support this week and also the continued support of the Collingwood Footy Club, which has always been behind the fixturing of this really important game for us. And as we know, the Melbourne Collingwood fixture is steeped in history. Um, this is where the, the home and away record crowd is a Queen's birthday clash between Melbourne and Collingwood where here in 1958 nearly 100,000 people arrived here. It was a magnificent day. So let's hope those glory days are relived again soon and that today's game is one that we can all remember. But in any event, Gary, just please take back our appreciation from the Melbourne Footy Club of your club's input to this great day and all the best today and uh, for the season ahead. Thanks, thanks very much. OK, and talking about important games in the fixture, also want to welcome from the AFL, haven't seen him yet, but General Manager of Broadcasting, Scheduling and Legal Affairs, big title, Simon Lethbloom. And uh, Simon plays a very important role determining the fixture, and I think we all appreciate the challenges you must face doing that. Not an easy job. Welcome to you, Simon. And also from the AFL down here, um, Commissioner Chris Langford, himself, of course, a, a former champion of the Hawthorne Football Club, and it's great to see you here, Chris. And uh, we certainly appreciate the support of the AFL of our football club in, uh, in these trying times. A special mention, of course, welcome as always to our major partners, David Galt and his guests are here from Webjet, and also Nick Angelis and his guests from Opal. And uh, as Ian said, keep your eye on the scoreboard about the wristband, five grand from, uh, from Webjet. So that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic prize. A special welcome also to a passionate demon in the room, John Pascoe, who's the National General Manager of uh, Battery World. And Battery World came on as a sponsor uh, this year as a silver partner and they've already committed for next year. And uh, we really appreciate your support, John, and thanks for your personal support and encouragement uh, over the last few weeks. I've appreciated that. And also a big welcome down to Neville Dove from Better Home Living, who's also committed uh, as a gold partner this year. And it's great to have you here, Neville. The footy club has a long history with you and uh, we really appreciate you introducing the Better Home Living group to us and we look forward to having a really successful relationship with you. So thanks for your support. And also uh, from the Northern Territory here today, I know there's a lot of uh, things to go through here, but really important to recognise all the people contributing to our footy club. Uh, to here today from Northern Territory, the, the Honourable Matt Conlon and his wife, Alara. Now, Matt holds six portfolios in the NT. Uh, most importantly, he's Minister for Sports and Recreation as, as well as Tourism. And uh, we're up there in a few weeks, uh, Matt, and look forward to further cementing our great relationship with the Northern Territory and, of course, our sponsor, Tourism NT. And we've also got from the Northern Territory, Patrick Hewitt, the Managing Director of the Wild Geese, which is our, uh, a group that's our top-end partner. And he also happens to be Nathan Jones's uncle. So. Uh, that's something to be very proud of at the moment. Nathan's playing brilliantly for us. And he also played in the under nines with the Demons. So well done, Patrick. Good to see you here today. And a couple of quick things just from our playing side. Dean Kent's parents are here, Wayne and Rebecca. And also his girlfriend, Stephanie. So um, Dean, who, who uh, is, you'll probably seen the last couple of weeks, raking left footer, um, drafted number 48 last year. And uh, he's really one of our young up and coming players. And good to see uh, Wayne and Rebecca here. And former players, I know there's quite a few around the room, but uh, I'll get into trouble if I don't mention that our Brownlow medalist is here, Brian Wilson. So welcome to you, Brian. So would you thank, join me in thanking all those people and special guests. 
All right, now um, an update on our club. And uh, as a precursor to the comments that I'm going to make, just firstly let me say, as president of this great club, uh, my board and I take full responsibility for the, full, for the position that we find ourselves in, and in no way do we deviate from that. Um, as you probably read by now, we're extremely pleased to announce uh, earlier this week following our board meeting last Monday that Peter Jackson has extended his commitment to the club until at least the end of 2014. Now this is an extremely important step uh, in our club overhaul and I'd really like to thank Peter for making that commitment. And his enthusiasm, his experience and his knowledge is going to be a great asset for our footy club. And I also want to inform you that as part of the assessment of the whole club, the board will be critically assessing their own performance. And it was agreed at last Monday's meeting that board member John Trotter, who's actually on the table here with me today, a former managing partner of Deloitte's, uh, will lead that board assessment. Now John, who joined the board in 2010, uh, has significant international and national corporate governance ex experience and expertise I've obtained over many, many years. And he'll be assisted where required by new board member Jeff Freeman and our CEO Peter Jackson. And the scope of that assessment is going to include board processes, structures and alignments to the future direction and objectives of the club. And this assessment will also include a review of the current number of directors, the balance of skills and the structure of our subcommittees. During this assessment period, the club via John will welcome the input of any passionate Demon supporters who believe they may have the attributes to take our club forward. And indeed, we have already had several discussions with interested and committed members who have something to offer. The board must be rejuvenated, but without jeopardising the key relationships and strategic partners that have been built over the years. And John Trotter will present the findings and recommendations of this board assessment at the scheduled meeting uh, in late June. And the recommendations will be shared with all our members and supporters soon after. And I also want to comment on some of the developments of last week, which I believe has reinforced that our members deserve to see a clear path forward for our club with new direction and energy as soon as possible. With regard to the comments made by David Schwartz, now Schwartz, you are a demon great, but I have to question the sense of some of your comments last week, albeit coming from the heart. And I have to say I find it incredible that you can state that you hope we get thrashed today. The board has made it clear we are reviewing all positions and structures throughout the club from top to bottom. And I have personally spoken with you several times to help you understand the complexities involved with moving our club forward. There are good people close to you, Schwarter, who share your passion but understand the bigger picture. And it is time you started listening to them. With regard to comments made by Jeff Kennett, one can only wonder what motivates a supporter of one AFL team to put themselves up as a president of a rival team. My preference would be to give no more oxygen to Jeff's comments. But I want to make it very clear to everyone that, that the Melbourne Football Club has no interest in someone who once said, my heart bleeds gold and brown. Nor are we interested in someone who has suggested the Melbourne Football Club should merge with another club or move to the Gold Coast. And we're not interested in someone whose judgment saw them call for Premiership coach Alistair Clarkson sacking after round one when they lost to Geelong. And needless to say, Hawthorne haven't lost a game since. Jeff, there was a very good reason the Victorian people threw you out of office, despite your record. <laughs> and from your performance last week, it would seem you're the only one who still doesn't know what that reason was. And to finish by labelling GWS the AFL's Gallipoli, well, Jeff, all I can say is it might be time for you to have a good, hard look in the mirror. As I've stated, our incumbent board takes full responsibility for where we are, and the decisions it has made can and should be analysed and questioned on their success or failure. However, in my view, my fellow directors cannot be questioned on their personal and financial commitment to our club, and they are all highly talented demon fanatics. And it would be a mistake for our club to not recognise that these directors can and will make a positive impact on the future of the club, whether they are on the board or not. And I got an email this week from a passionate demon and former board member Mick Coglin. Many of you in this room will know Mick, a very passionate demon, 
who reminded me that if the club is going to change, it needs to do so with dignity and unity. And those faceless, supposed influential supporters behind Jeff Kennett should remember that and they should have the courage now to come and talk to me or John Trotter about our club's future. We all agree on the need for change, but the extent of that change needs to be managed with the club's best interests at heart and not that of individuals, particularly those that don't bleed red and blue. So to finish and summarise, our change process is in its early stages, but members should know that there is a clear path forward for the club. Under John Trotter, the board assessment and subsequent recommendations and actions for rejuvenation will be completed within weeks. In Peter Jackson, we've locked in a first class CEO who will continue to analyse critical areas of the club and restructure their industry best practice. And we're in regular contact with the AFL and this week we will meet with the AFL Commission and will outline our plans for the future and will seek their continued support. And our football department will continue to be the number one priority of our efforts for improvement and subsequent success on the field is what drives all of us. So let's not forget the Melbourne Footy Club is an institution in Australian sport. The Melbourne Collingwood rivalry is part of the fabric of our great game and today another chapter in a great story will play out in front of us on the magnificent MCG. I can't wait for it. I hope you're all the same and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening and go Demons.